we will conclude our discussion on processor design today by introducing the capability to handle exceptions exceptions are basically unusual uh, circumstances or unusual events which a processor has to handle as you would recall that we started with design of a simple data path we looked at the performance issues and uh, modified the design to include a multi cycle data path where uh, attempt was to improve the utilization of the resources and uh, allow as far as possible just the right time for every instruction we saw a specific way of controlling a uh, data path with the help of micro program and finally now we are looking at the issue of exception handling so uh, first we will try to understand what are the exceptions and also i'll look at a term which is similar in terms of its meaning uh, that is interrupt okay so what are these two terms what what are the differences what are the similarities uh, look at some examples uh, and then particularly look at them in context of uh, the design we are doing so uh, we'll then see how do you handle these exceptions what's the basic idea what is it we require to do when uh, such a thing occurs and uh, we'll take our design which was done and incorporate this idea of handling exception <coughs> uh finally we'll elaborate further on this and look at how exceptions are handled in mif processor in general so uh, we'll take a little broader picture there so to begin with uh, let's try to understand what exceptions are as the name implies exceptions are unusual events or unusual happenings uh the source of these could be internal that is within the processor or it could be something which is outside the processor these could be synchronous and or asynchronous synchronous means that uh, these are synchronized with the clocks and the instruction so uh, one knows exactly uh, when it can occur whether it may occur or not is a different issue but uh, which what are the time slots or uh, clock period when we have to look for a particular type of exception so it may be synchronous in that sense that uh, you know its timing when it is expected or it could be asynchronous it may it may appear or it may occur any time and uh, you have absolutely no idea then uh, the the reason the motivation behind it it could be uh, intentional that is you you want some action to be done but it is not the main action it is uh, it's an exception so you want to handle it separately but it is something which you desire on the other hand uh, exception can also indicate something which you do not desire which you don't want to happen but uh, for something beyond your control it happens okay so still, still you have to react you have to react whether it is intentional or unintentional we will try to see uh, situations of both kinds so so this is uh, uh, something about the nature of these exceptions the other question is that uh, what do you do when exception occurs so the main thing is that uh, you are executing a sequence of instructions and you need to uh, go beyond that sequence and do something else so the flow of control which is implied by a sequence of instructions or maybe the embedded branches and jumps you have to uh, break off from there uh, go somewhere else uh, execute maybe some instruction which uh, represent your response to the exceptions okay so do that and uh, then possibly you you may come back or you may not come back so the question here is that what is the mechanism of making this happen okay how how do you uh, alter the flow of control right and uh, the second question would be that uh, how do you <coughs> identify what event was it which uh, is causing this break or what is causing this change of control and what exactly is the response so you you may transfer control but after having transferred what do you do it may depend upon uh, what was the reason for exception okay what caused it and what is the uh, how do we respond to it if if it was a intentional exception of course there there is a uh, clearly defined response which is expe expected which has to be taken but if it is uh, unintentional something which you don't want to happen uh, then you have to take some suitable action uh, in response to that and then 
uh, finally, after having taken that action, uh, do you uh, terminate the program? Because uh, situation may be that you cannot proceed further, or you, after having handled this exception, you come back to what you were doing earlier and continue. So uh, this will again depend upon what was the cause of exception and uh, uh, whether it leaves the processor in a state where you can continue or not. Now, uh, before we go further, let's uh, uh, bring these two terms together and. Uh, uh, look at the terminology. So, I mentioned that in literature there are two terms used exception and interrupts, which are often used interchangeably, meaning the same thing. Okay. So, uh, the, the meaning is same, they are just used as synonym, but there are some uh, architects or some designers who try to distinguish and use them for uh, somewhat different meaning. In uh, MIPS terminology, for example, uh, exception is used uh, as a general term it could mean internal cause or external cause, an event occurring internally in the processor or outside, whereas the term interrupt is used only for uh, external events. Okay, where So, exception is more general, interrupt is more specific, whereas in uh, Intel 8086 or x86 terminology, uh, the, the term used is interrupt okay, and uh, it is referred to uh, both uh, internal as well as external events, right? Whereas uh, in PowerPC, uh, you have exception, uh, which is a term used for the event which is occurring. Okay, it could be internal or external, and interrupt is a term used for the effect of it. Okay, so uh, one is the cause, one is the effect, and uh, uh, to me this this sounds uh, more sensible if you really look at the meaning of these, the normal natural meaning of these two terms, exception is that event which is happening okay? and interrupt is the effect of it that uh, you are doing some program, it gets uh, interrupted, you have to break off and do something else. right? So, uh, b but one must be while reading literature or reading about processor, one must be aware of uh, this variation in the terminology, so that one does not get confused. Okay, now, let us look at this slide, which tries to list a few common causes of exception all right? and, and this will give you a reasonable picture of what we mean. I have tried to uh, classify all these uh, depending upon whether they are internal or external, that is one thing. Secondly, whether they are uh, intentional or unintentional and thirdly, whether uh, these are these are synchronous or asynchronous okay so if you look at uh, the two rows first row corresponds to uh, internal events and the next one corresponds to external events column wise this column uh, refers to intentional events and this refers to unintentional events and color wise i have tried to dis distinguish between synchronous and asynchronous right so, you, you would notice that a variety of combination exists, you know one, one characteristic does not necessarily imply. So, let us go over these uh, one by one, uh, I am not necessarily going to uh, go in sequence, but uh, let us look at some of these. Look at this one, underflow and underflow or overflow. Uh, so, so, this is uh, something, some condition which we sense when arithmetic is being performed and as we have discussed that uh, when the result of some operation exceeds the limit which are prescribed by certain word size, then we call it underflow or overflow. Okay. So, so this, this is a, this is unintentional, you uh, normally when you are performing operation, uh, you, you would like, you would expect the result to be within the limits, okay. but if you are not making a check beforehand, uh, the result could exceed the range and this could happen. The question is, uh, what do you do when it happens? Okay. Uh, again, uh, it, it may be dependent upon uh, the intention of the programmer, whether you would still like to continue with uh, rest of the calculation or you look at it as an uh, as a situation where something has gone wrong, which was not intended and you want to abort execution and stop there. 
uh, then and of course, as uh, it is uh, clear, it is internal and it is synchronous in the sense that you know when it is going to occur in a program, in an instruction, when you are doing arithmetic instruction, when you are doing arithmetic operation in that particular cycle, you would know whether things went wrong or went right. Okay. Uh, undefined instruction, uh, suppose you have 6 bit opcode, which means there are 2 raise power 6 or 64 possible patterns of uh, uh, opcode which you can have, but your instruction set may not exactly be that. Okay. So, there may be some uh, opcode which are undefined. What happens when you are executing a program and uh, by whatever reason uh, you find an instruction where the opcode field has something for which you have not designed your hardware for. Okay. So, uh, in the simple case we have been discussing, we, ha we have looked at only 9 instructions but we still have we still have a 6 bit opcode field and there are many opcode which are uh, not defined as far as our design is concerned but uh, the, the hardware uh, must be ready to respond in a meaningful manner if uh, some unexpected instruction comes okay some code which is there which you cannot understand right so again this is uh, unintentional it is internal and it is synchronous uh, again uh, continuing within this uh, cell uh, the set of instruction is often in a real case divided into privilege instruction and uh, general instruction so privilege instructions are special instructions which are only allowed uh, for operating system okay so so these are used for overall resource management which operating system has to carry out and if a user program contains those instruction uh, the hardware has to check and uh, not allow that to proceed. So, if there is an access to uh, privilege instruction, okay, privilege instruction is the one which uh, ordinary user program is not allowed to execute. Uh, then there is a there is an event called uh, hardware malfunction, which means that something goes wrong in the hardware. Okay and uh, assume that hardware has some capability, there is some logic which can uh, self test, okay, which, which has ability to determine whether some fault has occurred in the hardware. Right? So, this can signal uh, this condition that there is a, there is a uh, fault in hardware or hardware is malfunctioning. So, now this is uh, as you can imagine, this is asynchronous, uh, at which point this may get detected may not necessarily be synchronized with the instruction right but it is uh, uh, it could be internal or external so, so therefore you will find that i have included this in uh, both <laughs> cases right so some hardware which is outside the processor uh, may malfunction and a signal may come to the processor that something has gone wrong or it could be internal right Okay, uh, let us look at this one, uh, memory access exception. Suppose uh, you have uh, uh, 2 raise power 32 or 4 GB of memory space, but physically in, in a given uh, piece of hardware you may not have entire memory uh, uh, filled up there. Okay, you may have a smaller memory, although the addressing capability is larger, but uh, an instruction can generate an address which is beyond what the physical memory is. So, so that that is a case of memory access exception or also what could happen is that if in a time sharing mode there are many programs running and uh, operating system will assign areas of memory to different programs. So, uh, each program is expected to uh, access memory within the area allocated to it. What happens if it goes beyond that? That is again a cause of exception. Uh, uh, memory, yeah, because uh, all right. Here I am assuming uh, memory as external. Although uh, uh, the the design which we have done so far is somewhat misleading in the sense that it, we have looked at memory, instruction memory, and data memory all part of the processor design. Uh, but uh, in reality, memory is a, is a separate. Uh, 
sub module all right and uh, memory access actually need not be in a single cycle so uh, memory of uh, may operate asynchronously or synchronously with the instructions all right so so it could be uh, it uh, if if it is a synchronous memory right uh, th then you know precisely uh, when the access is when the request is made to memory when it responds okay everything is synchronized with uh, a clock but often that clock could be different from the processor clock it could be bus may have a different clock a processor may have a different clock right so in general uh, it it's uh, more reasonable to assume that uh, exceptions related to memory are asynchronous so he here is another uh, memory related error which is alignment error uh, you as you know that uh, addresses which are generated are often byte addresses whereas memory is organized word wise so uh, a word may start at a uh, at an address which is multiple of 4 or not okay if if the uh, address of a word is multiple of 4 the the logical word and physical word are aligned if it is not then they may be misaligned that means a logical word may be spread over uh, two physical words okay some bytes the first word other bytes in the next word now uh, some processors may have this provision that you can uh, you can disallow unaligned memory accesses right because uh, there is a there is a performance penalty with unaligned access and uh, then a check has to be made whether access which is being made is aligned or not and if if you are trying to prevent unaligned accesses then any attempt to make an unaligned access uh, would be flagged as an error so that's one kind of error again related to uh, memory access they they could be timeouts particularly uh, relating to input output devices uh, power down okay this is something which may have which may be beyond the control of the processor and as i mentioned earlier hardware malfunction <coughs> okay now th there is other world of uh, exception which are intentional right uh, and uh, the examples are that invoking operating system function so uh, the way a user program gets some service uh, from operating system is to uh, create a situation which is same as exception all right so the, the response to that would be that uh, uh, the control gets transferred to the operating system operating system provides a service and control gets back to the user program so uh, the the reason why it needs to be done like that is that uh, operating system is able to execute uh, all privilege instruction and the service you may require may need that and os has access to all the resources all the peripherals and so on which a user program may not have direct access to so uh, so, so this is a uh, sort of a, uh, a special mechanism to and uh, to transfer control to operating system you you cannot write a jump instruction or a branch instruction uh, uh, where the target address is some address which lies in the operating system area you cannot jump into that because uh, uh, that that would be very uncontrolled very sort of uh, arbitrary uh, access to operating system you can jump into arbitrary area and <coughs> may cause something which is unpredictable so so this is a very this is like uh, a restricted area where you are uh, taken holding your hand you are shown around and you are brought back so uh, control gets transferred to os uh, you follow certain path carry out some uh, operation and then uh, you are not allowed to look look around here and there you come back so uh, so therefore uh, this is an intentional uh, event uh, and it is actually uh, is some special instructions are there which uh, which are actually treated like exception the the response to these is like exception and uh, control gets transferred to specific area of os uh, another main example of uh, intentional exception is request from input output device for carrying out possibly data transfer okay so let us say you wanted to transfer data from disk so a uh, your program may give a command 
and when the disk is ready with the transfer it may uh, send a signal which causes exception or cause interrupt and then the required service is provided. Then lastly uh, <coughs> tracing and debugging. So, uh, in some processor or in fact in most practical uh, processor there is a hardware debugging facility okay, which would for example, allow you to run the instruction uh, step by step one instruction at a time. So, the way it one, one way it could be done is that uh, after every instruction uh, there is an exception generated. So, so you do one instruction and then uh, exception takes you to a special uh, handler where uh, you would interact with the user who is trying to debug the program. Uh, you could display contents of memory location, contents of register and so on and after that when uh, user wishes to resume the program you come back. Uh, do one more instruction, but again exception happens you go back and so on. So, uh, in the user program only one instruction gets executed and you are back to uh, the, the exception handler which is actually supporting your debugging. Is there any question about uh, any of these uh, events or happenings? Uh, yeah, external uh, exceptions are always asynchronous, yes. So, because uh, the way we are defined synchronous ones are that uh, this is something which happens at a predictable time within the instruction. So, I think it is a straightforward implication that external events are asynchronous, but internal ones may be synchronous or asynchronous. Uh, okay, timeout uh, is that uh, you you want something to happen, uh, but it doesn't happen by that time. Okay, so what what is done is that there are timers which you set in motion. Uh, so it's like an alarm. Okay, you you uh, set the timer, and uh, when when the time expires, uh, it, it sends a signal which is taken as an exception. Okay, uh, for example. <coughs> Suppose uh, you wanted to do some input output, okay? You you uh, send a request to input device, and uh, you expect response within let's say one millisecond. So you set a timer for one millisecond. If uh, the device responds, it is fine. You shut the timer off. If it does not, then after one millisecond you will. Uh, if device doesn't respond, the timer will respond, and uh, then you can take necessary action. <coughs> Any any other question? Power down. Uh, power failure. Okay. Uh, it could be well. Uh, in general, uh, what we mean here is that uh, when something goes wrong with the power, right? Uh, you may often have some time to take uh, an action which will, for example, save your uh, current status of computation. So, so you, you can save the registers and um, you, uh, you you cannot you cannot do uh, much to say what was in the memory. Suppose you, you were executing a program, uh, there were some partial results in memory, maybe some uh, something in the arrays, uh, but what you have in registers can at least be saved in memory. You, you cannot save from memory to disk, you may not have that much time, because uh, there may be some acceptable uh, level of voltage beyond which uh, the system has to be shut down. Uh, so, you, you can generate a warning signal little before that, so that you get some time to take uh, uh, some, some action. Uh, in some embedded processor where you, you are running on battery, uh, you may intentionally do power down, okay, when you see inactivity and uh, uh, there, there is no need to keep uh, processor in uh, active state. Uh, some processor provides this mechanism that you can uh, reduce the voltage. You cannot, to you don't totally shut off, but reduce the voltage to the extent that contents of memory are preserved, but uh, processor does not execute instruction. So, so that is a state 
uh, which will consume much less power and for power consumption, uh, power conservation you get into that state. So, uh, so, so in that state also you may have to take some action before you change the state. Okay, next, uh, now we understand what these exceptions are. Let us try to see in general uh, what is we, what is it that we are expected to do. So, uh, imagine a timeline uh, horizontally. So, you have uh, let us say a sequence of instruction which is some activity is happening. Uh, So, uh, <coughs> suppose this represents uh, the, the normal action, some program is running and it is at this point you identify, you notice that some event has occurred. Then a possible response is that at this you transfer the control to some other activity, carry it out uh, and uh, at the end of it you just uh, stop the processor. So, interrupt and halt. Other possibility is that uh, after doing this what is called exception handling or interrupt handling, you come back and resume what was being done. Okay. So, uh, here there could be multiple choices of uh, what you need to do and it depends upon what was the cause of the exception. So, uh, in this uh, interrupt and resume situation, I am showing two alternatives. One is called vector interrupt where as you transfer the control, uh, you ad also identify what is the cause of the exception and transfer control to one of the many possibilities. So, for example, if it is uh, uh, overflow, you go to one address, if it is illegal instruction, go to another address, if it is hardware malfunction, you go to another address and so on. So, directly in one shot, you go to one of the many addresses and each at each address, you have uh, some piece of code. Uh, which we call as interrupt service routine or interrupt handler or exception handler, which takes the necessary action. On the other hand, other alternative is uh, which is not vectored is that you transfer control to a specific address irrespective of what was the cause and then execute a few instructions here to determine the cause and then branch off have a multi way branch and go to one of these. Okay. So, uh, uh, as you can see, uh, this there is some extra time spent here uh, by a few instructions to figure out what was the cause of the exception and then you are branching off to take appropriate action. Whereas, in this case, uh, there has to be a hardware mechanism so that the next address is uh, influenced by the cause of the exception. Right? So, so, this is faster of course, this takes more time, but uh, it need more uh, expensive terms of hardware. Uh, then complications uh, can arise when there are multiple sources of exception. Uh, you, you may be servicing one exception and some other exception can arise. Okay? So, even this gets interrupted, you do something else, you do third thing, come back to this, when you are finished, then you come back to that. So, there could be uh, nesting of interrupts or nesting of exceptions, which can complicate the issues. So, now let us uh, try to be specific to our design of uh, those 9 instructions, which we have uh, talked of and uh, let us look at specific cases, which can occur here. So, we will focus our attention on these 2 exceptions, which are shown here, exception resulting from undefined instructions and exception resulting from overflow. So, uh, here I am showing the, an instruction like add instruction, which goes through 4 cycles. If you recall in the first cycle, you are fetching the instruction and updating PC. In the next cycle, you are de decoding the instruction, you are looking at opcode. At the same time, you are getting 
two values from the register file a and b here you perform actual arithmetic okay so i'm calling it execute cycle and finally you write the result back into register file i'm calling it write back cycle so instruction fetch decode execute write back so these are four cycle instruction goes through and uh, it is in this cycle that you will identify you will uh, come to know if the opcode is not one of those which you have catered for whereas it is in this cycle you will know that uh, overflow has occurred right so uh, you you can take action anywhere uh, after this okay after occurrence of after you have detected in any of the following cycle you can uh, take a suitable decision to branch off to uh, some other point so now to do this what is it you need in the design we we uh, suppose we have intention of coming back to uh, the program which is interrupted so you will have to save the value of the program counter somewhere okay uh, so so this is something like a, a subroutine right like like jal instruction uh, where you need to transfer the pc to return address ra register and then you can do jr and come back so we we want to do something similar uh, one possibility could have been that we use uh, dollar ra for doing this that uh, before transferring control save the pc value in ra uh, but what could happen is that uh, this exception may occur uh, at a point where you are interfering with a normal procedure call so for example uh, what you do is that Uh, after jl instruction the control gets transferred and first thing you try to do is save uh, ra in in the stack for example right it might take one or two or three instructions before you could do that and if exception occurs because exception may be sometime unpredictable if exception occurs at that time uh, where you have made jl you have made the transfer but you have not saved ra and uh, if exception causes another transfer and pc value get stored in ra then the old value will get lost so for that purpose uh, a different register is can be provided uh, in uh, mips it is called epc or exception program counter the purpose of this is to uh, save the value of pc save pc of the instruction causing exception and then it can be uh, used it can be read out when you want to resume the interrupted program so so this is one part of it actually in uh, some processors where the call instruction directly says program counter on stack okay unlike our mips case where it is first saved in ra and then ra gets saved in stack but there are some processor where uh, call instruction means that program counter directly gets pushed on the stack uh, in those cases usually uh, in case of exception also the program counter will get pushed on the stack and there is no register like epc provided okay okay uh, second thing we need is what is called a cause register which will basically record the cause of exception in our case there are two possible exceptions so it could be a one bit register only right but uh, in in general in uh, in real cases the many causes of exception and the registers are bigger so often it may be a full fledged 32 bit register you may not use uh, all the 32 bits but several bits do get used so let's code it as follows uh, uh value 0 in this would mean it's undefined instruction exception and one would mean arithmetic overflow exception right third thing we need to uh, arrange for is that to which address we transfer the control to so address of exception handler or interrupt service routine so let's assume that this is the address in hexadecimal where we need to transfer the control okay so uh, when uh, this is the value which needs to be loaded in pc uh, when we detect the exception has occurred in case of vector interrupt you have uh, you have an array of such addresses and you transfer control to one of those depending upon the cause of exception so so these uh, these addresses could be typically uniformly spaced let us say they are spaced by uh, 16 words right then uh, 
you may not necessarily be able to accommodate each exception routine within 16 word. What you can do is you can write some initial code and then branch off to some other place. So, here is uh, the same good old data path which we had designed multi cycle data path and uh, what it shows in different color are the additions or alterations which are required to uh, handle these exceptions. So, let us look at these one by one. Uh, this this is a EPC or exception program counter, where we will store the address of instruction which caused exception. Okay. Now, uh, by the time we detect exception, PC would have incremented by 4. Okay. So, if we want to get the original value of PC back, we need to do PC minus 4 again and it is this ALU which can be made to do that. Uh, so, P C and 4 are already available as operand to ALU by suitably controlling these multiplexers. Okay. All you need to do is tell that this operation now is minus and uh, output of ALU can be stored in E P C. So, I assume that the control signal which will allow something to be loaded into this is E W or E P C write. So, this is one part. Second thing is a cause register. Uh, which will store a value 0 or 1 depending upon cause of the exception. So, it is simply uh, a small register with a control signal which uh, controls loading something into it and uh, the value which gets loaded into it. So, a 0 or 1 uh, we, we are assuming that uh, this value will also come from the controller. Uh, the, the controller will go into a state where exception has been detected and there it will generate a signal 0 1 depending upon which exception has been detected. And the third thing is uh, an alternative source for the p next PC value. So, we have uh, earlier we had a 3 input multiplexer here which now has been extended to 4 input multiplexer and the fourth value is this address of the exception handler. Okay. So, so now with, with these uh, three small alterations, you, your data path is ready to handle exceptions. We will now go back to the controller, uh, controller design, basically uh, look at the flow chart and see what are the stages at which you detect these exceptions and there will cause transition to new states where the new action will be taken. Is, is there any question about this one? So, uh, this is the same uh, controller diagram, we have made some change here and some change here. Okay. So, in, uh, in this stream of in this uh, chain of states, uh, suppose this is the state where you did the arithmetic, where you performed addition subtraction and as a result you will either have successful operation or you would have detected overflow. So, after this actually you can branch off, but we have actually postponed here. Uh, th this choice actually depends upon uh, whether you want to store the result in register file irrespective of whether there was overflow or not. Okay. So, here the decision is that you will store the value, you will store the result in register file even if there was an overflow. That may be necessary if a programmer wants to do something with that value. Okay. Uh, and, and continue further, but, but sometime you may like uh, the state of the register file to remain clean and not get any erroneous value. In that case, uh, you must uh, bifurcate at this point itself after this state, okay. but I am branching off here. So, the, uh, here either you uh, go through the normal path when there is no overflow or when there is overflow you go to another state. Which, which I am labeling as CS10 and I will show the action of this uh, in a separate figure. Right? So, so, this is the new addition. Similarly, at this point when you are branching off to R class, load store, B, Q, J, if it is none of these you branch off to another state. Okay? So, so, this is a state where I know that an illegal or undefined opcode has occurred and a suitable action can be taken here. So, so, these are the two 
patches or two small changes which are there in this uh, control state transition diagram. Now, let us see what, what we do in these new states C S 10 and C S 11. Uh, in C S 10, which has to respond to arithmetic overflow, uh, what we do is E P C gets the value of P C minus 4, the cause register is set to 1 and new value of P C is C followed by 7 zeros. Okay. C S 11 is identical the only difference is that cause register gets a different value. In in a vectored interrupt, uh, we will not have cause register, or we may still have cause register, but uh, different values will go to P C, okay. but here we are uh, assigning same value to P C and we will figure out later on by looking at the cause register. Cause register will determine what was the cause of the exception and a suitable action can be taken accordingly. So, now, uh, to achieve this, what what values we need to put to the control inputs that is shown here. Uh, for uh, making this happen, E P C getting P C minus 4, we need to give appropriate value to uh, A source 1 and A source 2. Okay. So, A source 1 equal to 0 will select P C as the first operand, A source 2 equal to 0 1 selects 4 as the second operand and O P C equal to 0 1 will result in subtraction being performed. The result we do not want to load into uh, result register, but on the other hand we will load it into exception register. So, it is right signal we are making as 1. Okay. Uh, then we need to write something into P C. So, unconditional write signal for P C is 1, conditional write is 0. Uh, well, actually it could be do not care and source is 1 1 which means the, the new input to the multiplexer will be selected and that value C 0 0 0 will get uh, transferred to P C. <coughs> this is made 1 for uh, writing something to cause register. The value to be written into cause register uh, is the signal i n t which will be 0 or 1, 1 for C S 10 state and 0 for C S 11 state. Okay. So, both are identical except for the different values getting written here. Okay. So, this was very simple case, uh, but there may be many more issues. Uh, you may like certain amount of control of exception handling. Uh, you may like to for example, disable or enable. There may be some critical portion in the program, where you may not like to get distracted and handle exceptions and that is particularly true of exception coming from outside. Internal exceptions like overflow etcetera or uh, hardware fault you have to do something you know you cannot sleep over that. So, enable disable is a mechanism to enable or disable the interrupt uh, or exception system as a whole, but it is also possible to mask or unmask specific interrupts. Okay. You may say that I want to look at this, this, this interrupt but I want to ignore for the moment these, these, these interrupts. Okay. Uh, also, you can uh, define priorities for various uh, events and uh, you may handle them according to the priority. Okay. Uh, then, we talked about saving of only uh, the program counter, so that we can return back, but there may be often need to save other registers, because in the interrupt handling, uh, you you may have uh, need to use other registers, which may be containing the values of partial computation which was going on. So, in some processors, uh, it, it is the responsibility of software to do saving of those uh, registers. In some cases, hardware does it for a faster action. And then, uh, how do you return from exception, uh, where it may not be simply a matter of transferring control, you may have to restore uh, if something were saved. So, uh, let us uh, have a quick look at uh, the exception handling in MIPS processor uh, on the whole. So, in MIPS uh, the, the piece of the portion of hardware which handles exception is uh, treated as a coprocessor. You remember that when we talked of floating point, I mentioned that it is called coprocessor 1. So, coprocessor 0 is ex actually the exception handler and it has its own 
uh, set of registers okay which are again numbered 0 1 2 3 4 but they are specific names and specific purposes for these registers these are not general purpose registers uh, some of these i have listed here uh, register 8 12 13 and 14 uh, 13 and 14 are what we have already talked of 13 is cause register uh, which actually carries the information about uh, what was the exception type, which event caused the exception and uh, if they are pending interrupts, you know you may have several exceptions, several interrupts coming in here, <coughs> you may be handling only one, others may remain pending. EPC uh, contains address of instruction that caused exception. So, apart from this, you have a status register which carries interrupt mask and enable bits. So, these are the controls for enabling or disabling overall interrupt system or specific events. Uh, this register will carry the memory address when you suppose you made a memory reference and some exception occurred there. Okay. So, that, that address is actually uh, contained in this register. Some details of the status register. Okay. Uh, there is an, a few bits of these are considered as interrupt mask. So, here one bit is for one different type of interrupt. So, bit number 8 to 15 that means uh, 8 uh, specific interrupts can be individually masked or unmasked. Okay. And uh, then overall enable disable is stored here as you would see that there are three, 3 sets of values the current value, previous value and one before that. Uh, and each of these is 2 bits. One bit uh, determines whether you are in kernel mode or privilege mode or user mode or the normal mode okay uh, and at the same time other bit uh, is the enable bit so so now these six bits actually form a stack of depth 3 okay so so you are uh, storing the current enable disable value and uh, current mode whether it is kernel or user and similarly you have uh, one for the previous uh, state and one before that. So, as the exception occurs, uh, this, stack, this stack gets pushed down. So, when you return from the stack, uh, you know whether you were uh, in kernel mode or user mode and whether in, in that uh, interrupt was enabled or disabled. Okay. So, all that information is carried in this status register. The cause register uh, has uh, exception code which indicates which kind of exception it is. So, there are various causes, uh, I will not go into detail of all of those. Let me refer to some of those which I have already mentioned. This is overflow, uh, this, refers, this refers to undefined instruction, this is break point, syscall is for OS service, INT is external interrupt and these are related to memory errors. And here there is information about pending interrupts. So, as you would notice that the overall uh, interrupt system could be fairly complex and actually all the interrupt handling routines are part of the operating system. It is not typically the user who writes these routines. Uh, so, when these, uh, they, they have to be very carefully defined responses to various events and they all form part of the operating system currently. So, here is a small example of uh, uh, interrupt handler. Okay. Uh, I will not show full code, there are just uh, some usual uh, actions which are there. Uh, first, first thing which is happening here is that uh, register A0, A1 are being saved because they are required inside. And then uh, two registers K0 and K1 are one of those 32 main CPU register which were at some point I must have mentioned that these are reserved for the operating system. So, so this is where they get used right. Uh, look at these two instructions move from coprocessor 0. So, from register 13 which is the cause register of coprocessor 0 you, you get information into K 0 similarly 14 which is EPC you get in K 1 and uh, then you may do something about this. So, so K 0 is causing the K 0 is containing the cause register. So, here you may decide uh, which uh, exception you want to handle in which particular way okay? 
and uh, if there is something which you don't want to handle, you can uh, decide that and branch off. You can skip remaining processing. Uh, here, what we are trying to do is uh, calling a print routine, which will print the value of these, print the value in K0 and K1, which are cause and EPC. Uh, then when you are done, uh, you restore values of A0, A1 from these memory locations. Uh, you, you are containing address of the instruction which caused exception and now you want to resume from the next instruction onward. So, you add 4 to that and do uh, JR. Okay. There is another instruc new instruction which you see here, which is RFE standing for return from exception. So, this return from exception will uh, take care of uh, that uh, stack of th those uh, three level stack of two bits. Okay. So, so when you uh, uh, get into an exception handling routine, you are pushing down that stack. When you come out, you pop up that stack. And here is uh, the way these two uh, memory locations are defined. Okay. Uh, I think this should have been 0. Uh, idea was to initialize these two, 0. So, now what you would note the important thing to be noticed here is that uh, uh, the information available to you here in, in our simple case was that uh, cause register and EPC. Okay, EPC allows you to go back and cause register tells you what is to be done. So, in most simple case, this is what you need. And uh, here you might wonder that uh, we are trying to undo something which we apparently did extra. Okay. We already had PC plus 4. For saving, we went back to PC and now we want to get PC plus 4 again. Now, the, the reason why we uh, save uh, address of the instruction which cause exception and not the one which is following is that uh, in the exception handling routine, sometime you may like to analyze what the instruction was. Okay. And, and therefore, you, you want you want a quick access to that address. So, for example, if it was uh, undefined opcode, you would like to see what opcode was, so that a uh, suitable message can be printed or action could be taken. So, so therefore, we did PC minus 4 that time, so that we have uh, EPC contains the instruction of, contains the address of a, uh, instruction which caused exception. But if you are resuming, uh, in this case, we wanted to resume from the next instruction. There may also be cases when you want to resume from the instruction uh, which caused the exception. So, for example, uh, suppose uh, it will happen in uh, uh, case of virtual memory. So, suppose you wanted to access some memory location uh, which is uh, uh, not actually present and it information has to be brought from disk. So, in such a case exception will occur and that instruction will not get completed. So, you have to come back and complete that instruction once, uh, suppose it was a load instruction, you are trying to load some word but that uh, word has been swapped out. It is in disk, but not in main memory. So, instruction does not complete, uh, but, but your intention is to complete it. So, you handle the exception, which will bring the data into memory. You will come back to the same instruction, complete it and then proceed further. So, if, if you are handling exception like that, you will not do this. Okay? You will simply uh, return to uh, the same instruction where exception was caused. Okay, so, I uh, will close with that and uh, just to recapitulate what we did. We uh, looked at the meaning of exception and the term interrupt, uh, how they can be defined and uh, compared. Uh, looked at various conditions which can cause exception or interrupt. Uh, we looked at the mechanism of checking exception and altering the flow of control. Uh, we uh, took our simple data path design. Uh, multi cycle design and uh, caused uh, alteration or additions to handle exception. And finally, we had a brief look at the overall interrupt mechanism in uh, MIPS processor. Thank you.